Yevgeny Prigozhin was called Putin's chef, known for his catering businesses used to host dinners with foreign dignitaries. Prigozhin spearheaded Putin's private army that has turned against him. It was initially made up of a thousand or so contractors headhunted to protect oil fields and pipelines back in 2015, but has grown significantly since then. The average age of a Wagner private military contractor is 40 years old. Wagner operatives have been accused of committing war crimes, murder, torture, rape and robbery of civilians, as well as torturing accused deserters. Though the majority of Wagnerites were from Russia, PMCs come from as many as 15 different countries. Some were even recruited from imprisoned Union for Peace rebels in the Central African Republic. In the CAR, they were perfecting a nightmarish blueprint to secure the national resources, particularly gold and diamonds. Over the past five years, Wagner training involved ultraviolet techniques of torture and killing, including on how to cut fingers and legs, remove nails, strangle, throw fuel, and burn people alive. This, combined with Russia's secret service spies and assassins poisoning and silencing reporters and politicians, reveal a hidden program to censor their exploits. Videos of a gruesome killing went viral on Russian social networks. The unsteady cell phone footage taken at Altshire gas plant near Palmyra, Syria, shows a Syrian man surrounded by Russian-speaking men in military fatigues. They pounded his limbs with a sledgehammer before beheading him, setting fire to his body, and posing for photographs with his remains. A member of the group can be overheard discussing whether they should cover their faces before one says, there's no point, as the video is not going to go anywhere. It was confirmed to be Amdi Bauta, a father of four from Syria's Deir Etzer governorate. Balta traveled to Lebanon in 2016 in search of work in the construction industry. The region came under Islamic State control. On his way back to Syria in 2017, he was arrested and drafted into the Syrian military. At some point in late March or early April, he escaped on foot from the T-4 airbase in Homs. Lost in the desert, he appears to have sought refuge in Al Sher gas field, where he was later tortured and killed. Hybrid warfare has become the basis of Russia's efforts to protect its interests overseas. A similar melding of public and supposedly private entities was used in 2016 in a bid to influence the outcome of the U.S. presidential election with Russian military hackers stealing emails and documents from the Hillary Clinton campaign, while the so-called troll factory, allegedly funded by Prigozhin, pursued to encourage divisions between American voters. When new Wagner private military company recruits arrive at the training camp, they are no longer allowed to use social media or other internet resources. Company employees are not allowed to post photos, texts, audio and video recordings, or any other information on the internet that was obtained during their training. They're not allowed to tell anyone their location, whether they're in Russia or another country. Mobile phones, tablets, and other means of communication are left with the company and issued at a certain time with the permission of their commander. Passports and other documents are surrendered, and in return, company employees receive a nameless dog tag with a personal number. The company only accepts new recruits if a 10-year confidentiality agreement is established, and in case of a breach of the confidentiality, the company reserves the right to terminate the employee's contract without paying a fee. Russian military officers are assigned the role of drill instructors for the recruits. During their training, the PMCs receive $1,100 per month, then are estimated to make between $667 and $2,083 a month after training. One source stated the pay was as high as $2,500 in USD, with reduced requirements such as no drug tests. 
Fogner gets criticized for recruiting Serbia nationals, and attempts were made to put an end to the practice, noting that it's illegal under Serbian law for Serbian citizens to take part in foreign armed conflicts. A so-called Wagner Code of Honor was revealed that lists 10 commandments for Wagner's PMCs to follow to protect the interests of Russia always and everywhere, to value the honor of a Russian soldier, to fight not for money, but from the principle of winning always and everywhere. Task Force Rusic was founded by self-proclaimed neo-Nazi Alexei Milchikov and is open about its far-right ideology. Rusic was a sabotage and assault reconnaissance group and was the most far-right extremist or neo-Nazi unit. Their logo featuring a Slavic swastika. It's been reported that the Wagner Company has a small group of Norwegian and Scandinavian citizens integrated amongst its ranks. The unit is referred to as the Nidogger, correlated to a dragon that is well known in Norse mythology, and has been seen upon various patches of this unit within the Wagner group. Andrei Medvedev worked in the Norwegian battalion called Nidogger, has been linked to far-right extremism, white supremacy, and neo-Nazism. Many founding members of Prigozhin's Wagner Group belong to the far-right ultranationalist Russian Imperial Movement. Wagner co-founder Dmitry Utkin is reportedly a neo-Nazi and has several Nazi tattoos. The name Wagner itself comes from Utkin's own call sign, Wagner. He is said to have chosen the name in honor of German composer Richard Wagner because Adolf Hitler admired his music. Members of Wagner group say Utkin is a Rodnover, a follower of Slavic native faith. Wagner members have also left neo-Nazi graffiti on the battlefield such as swastikas and the SS emblem. The Wagner group is not driven by ideology, but rather a network of mercenaries linked to the Russian security state. Putin in the past frequently denied any links between Russian state and Wagner and insisted it's a private military company. Though on one occasion, Wagner employees were issued international passports in bulk by the GRU via Central Migration Office Unit. Rather than being a single organization, Wagner is an opaque network of titular companies such as Concord Management and Consulting and Concord Catering and private military contractors that simultaneously further the Kremlin's interests while lining the pockets of those involved. The men responsible for murdering Bauta are believed to have worked for Evropolis, a company that exemplifies the way organizations within the network have blended business and warfare. The Wagner Group received the equivalent of $9.8 billion and his Concord catering business received $9.6 billion from state sources. In late January 2023, the United States announced it would designate Wagner as a significant transnational criminal organization, enabling further tougher sanctions to be implemented against the group. The United States was reported to be working with Egypt and the United Arab Emirates to put pressure on the military leaders of Sudan and Libya to end their relationship with the Wagner Group and expel them from the countries. The Wagner Group had supported the UAE's and Saudi Arabia's allies in Sudan and Libya. In addition, the Wagner PMCs in Libya were mainly funded by the UAE. On June 24, 2023, Yevgeny Prigozhin was accused by the Russian government of organizing an armed uprising after he threatened to attack Russian forces in response to a claimed airstrike on his PMCs. Russian security forces accused the founder of the Wagner Group of launching a takeover attempt 
advancing on the Russian city of Rostov-on-Don, an important operations base for Russia's war in Ukraine, occupying bases there. Senior Russian generals urged Wagner's fighters to withdraw. Russia's National Security Service, FSB, said it had filed criminal charges against Prigozhin and intend to arrest him. Prigozhin claimed that Wagner mercenary forces entered Rostov without any resistance. Some Russian forces had even likely remained passive. Troops from Prigozhin's private military group seized control of a military base and moved in convoy toward Moscow, facing little resistance and a remarkable and unexpected challenge to the Kremlin leader. Individual decisions to support or betray Putin could tip the balance of the showdown. The loyalty of Russia's military forces, especially the Russian National Guard, will be key to how the crisis plays out. Putin had said those on an armed rebellion would be punished. A deal brokered by Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko de-escalated the coup. Prigozhin would be exiled in Belarus under protection deal, and no legal action was taken against his troops. The Belarusian leader also has asked Wagner mercenaries to train his military. Putin thanked Wagner fighters for making the right decision to halt their advance and offered them three options. Sign contracts with the defense ministry or other law enforcement agencies, return home, or go to Belarus. Lukashenko said they are happy to accommodate them. He told them, set up tents, please. But for now, they are Luhansk and eastern Ukraine in their camps. They're said to have already been hit squads contracted to eliminate Prigozhin and the United States will continue to target the Wagner Group's revenue streams to degrade its expansion and violence in Africa, Ukraine, and anywhere else. They aren't designated to guard tactical nuclear weapons. Leaving that to Russians and Belarusians, Lukashenko is quoted to have said, in terms of nuclear weapons, most of them were already brought to Belarus. I won't say how many. It's surprising that they didn't trace it. It would be the first time Belarus has had nuclear weapons on its territory since the early 1990s. Important European nuclear plants are being targeted by Russia, with all sides blaming each other for the escalation. Prigozhin stated, We are patriots of our motherland. We fought and we are fighting, he said in audio messages. And no one is going to turn themselves in at the request of the president, the FSB, or anyone else.